up guys? Today is my first day back of training after being sick for an entire week. And uh, you know how after you're sick and you're just bedridden and you don't really move for the whole week, right? Any little thing can make you go out of breath. If you go up the stairs too fast, you take a shower too aggressively or something, or you play with your nephew and you're like, oh God, I haven't moved the entire week. Well, that's how I feel. But to make the situation even worse, um, I tried something new today in the workout and I am fucking exhausted. And it's called giant sets. So giant sets, it's taking a bunch of, it's kind of like a superset where you take two exercises that are back to back and you put them together. So you can increase the amount of work that you do. Also a shorten the amount of time. Giant sets is just like that, except you're putting, excuse me, you put four to five exercises back to back and they're all the same muscle groups. At least this is the way that the old school bodybuilders used to train where they want to increase the hypertrophy which means the muscle building and the muscle fatiguing while reducing the time training and then because you're doing so much work in such a little amount of time you sweat profusely and you keep your heart rate up. So imagine doing cardio non-stop but with weights and that's what I'm trying to do and the reason why I'm doing this is um, I'm trying to get lean within the next four or five months because uh, I want to shred all this fat off and oh and my bulk right now by the way I know a lot of you guys I see in the comments and both my IG and uh, both on the vlogs you guys are like damn Bart really let himself go I didn't let myself go because I'm not Chandler from friends where I don't know anything about fitness this is a controlled bulk meaning on purpose I put on this weight so it is much easier to Put on size and strength if you're in a caloric surplus, meaning you're eating a lot and you're putting in way more calories than your body needs. And because of that, I have some strength goals that I know it's gonna be very hard for me to achieve because of my busy schedule if I don't just devote myself to it and just kind of give my body all the nutrients it needs to achieve that this year. Because I'm just gonna get busier and busier working on a TV show, working on a movie and all that stuff. And Bartle Brigade's growing. I'm just gonna have to devote more and more time to business, but I still wanna achieve my own personal strength goals you know and uh, because of that I went on a controlled bulk so I did put on quite a bit of weight but it's controlled so that's the key word and now that I have achieved the size and strength that I am relatively satisfied with satisfied did I just say satisfied I don't even know what I'm saying I'm fucking exhausted from the workout that I'm satisfied with now it's time for me to be like a butterfly and shed my cocoon and see what's underneath all this fat because I'm pretty sure I put on a lot of muscle and uh, it's evident in all my lifts. Like I, I, I came really close to benching 405 pounds, which has been a lifetime gold mine for a long, long time. And I deadlifted 585 and I probably could have pulled uh, 600 that day. 585 felt really good. But uh, now it's time for me to get lean and uh, to show what I've put on underneath. And because of that, I, uh, I don't have that much time to train. So I did want to kind of make the, the most out of my workout and that's where I was researching giant sets. And uh, so today was my first time doing giant sets and that shit is exhausting. We did um, high bar squats for 10 reps and front squats for 10 reps and then straight leg good mornings for 10 reps and then 10 body weight lunges and you do all of it back to back to back to back, rest like three minutes and do it again and again and again. We did it for four rounds and I was fucking murdered. And on top of that, I'm still coming back I mean, it's my first day back from being sick, so I'm already exhausted from that shit. Man, this shit is crazy. I don't even know how I'm driving right now. I, my uh, Porsche, it's manual, so I have to have a clutch, and I'm surprised my quad isn't just like locking up right now. But I do feel really good because with all the other type of strength training that you do, you don't really do super high volume, super high reps, so you don't really break a sweat the way that you do if you were to go jogging, running, CrossFit, or any other type of more aerobic activity. And uh, because of the back-to-back -back weights, we kind of turned all those uh, weight movements, barbell movements, into aerobic activity. And I was sweating profusely, which I'm very happy about. And it just kind of felt good to finally break a sweat, get some really good training in. Not to mention Omar Isaf, who's a, a fitness YouTuber who came down from uh, Toronto, Canada. He came to visit, so we got a good training session in. And we've been trying to schedule something like the past week, but I've just been sick. So uh, I'm really, really happy about that, that uh, the whole morning is just a very positive morning. I even got my uh, McDonald's unsweetened iced tea back on the diet and I'm, uh, I'm ready to get shredded and get lean and get disciplined. Watch me guys.
over the next four months, I guarantee you I will look way better and I will be much, much stronger and uh, I'll be back to the the old Bart Kwan because I do see all those comments where everyone's like, damn, Bart was so lean. The old Bart, hashtag body goals. And then they, they look at me now and they think I'm like this fat, fat freaking piece of slime or something like that, but it's controlled. It's uh, I did it on purpose and I've bulked and cut and bulked and cut many times throughout my training career. So I know exactly what I'm doing. I know how my body responds. Um, now I just got home. I also got my chicken sandwich. I'm gonna take a quick shower and get ready. And we're working at a new office today. Watching this uh, documentary on Netflix, okay, and I think it's about the 70s. Okay, and then in the documentary, they're talking about how a lot of the standards for TV that we have in this day, those rules were set in the 70s. Oh, like what? So one of them, it's they call it the Jigglies. <laughs> so in the 70s, that's when they really started introducing like sex appeal and stuff. And there's a formulaic way. It's not just like oh, hot girl. They, they know, okay, um, kind of like a, a feature film movie structure, there's act one, act two, act three. Okay. For TV shows, they know that they have, okay, hot girl, like wide shot here, and then we probably, in the midway, like at three minutes, we gotta get a butt shot, and later on, we gotta get like a jiggly shot. And these things have nothing to even do with the show. The show could be like Wheel of Fortune, or the show could be like, um, uh, like this is how you cook. Today's cooking shows, whatever, right? And so jigglies, it's a, um, it's a term for when a girl has to shake her tits around uh -huh. or when she is running, like, you know, like in scary movies and stuff yeah. like that. And then so in a movie, I just watched the movie Sicario, and in a movie like Sicario, where it's like, it's not a blockbuster, so they're not even trying to appeal to the masses. It's for, for a film, like, connoisseur type people, and it's... And it's shot very well and it has high level actors, Benicio Del Toro, Emily Blunt. And even in a movie like that, I saw Jigglies. So there was Emily Blunt, she was uh, walking to her car. And yeah, like the scene does call for a rapid walk. But the way she was walking, I think she was like driving her heels into the ground <laughs> to make her fucking tits like bounce. Yeah, like that. Like, like, like she was purposely doing that. And I'm like, that's the Jiggly shot. I'm like, even in a movie like this, that is probably trying to be an Oscar contender. Yeah, it totally was trying to be an Oscar contender. There's a Jiggly shot. And there's another shot, uh, there's another scene where it was, um, it was uh, uh, Emily Blunt and her partner. And she comes out of the bathroom with just a bra on. And it's probably like one of the most sheerest, lightest sports bras I've ever seen where it's, it might as well be see-through oh, right. and she comes out and then uh, her partner was like who, who's like super friend zone in, in the thing like not on purpose but you could just tell they've been partners for a long time so there's no sexual tension or anything like that was he like shirtless too he was shirtless she was like no he was like oh you need a you need a new bra like you should get something lacy or something she's like that's why you haven't been able to get any dick around here or something like that yeah, but just... then the emphasis was in that scene was definitely on her jigglies too what, what is this documentary called? I want to go watch it too. Uh, on Netflix, I think there's a, there's this one called like I think the '70s, uh -huh. and it's a oh. entire series. There's a whole series. A whole, it's a whole TV that. series. Oh, yeah, shit. and I think I it's. Came across that series before. Yeah, and then there's the first. I think the first or second one. Jiro was just watching it, and then that's when like mass sex appeal where girls in bikinis and the girls like shaking their booty. That's when they really added in and they realized the ratings skyrocketed. So now I think that's probably also one of the reasons why like in every single film, regardless of what caliber it is, there's always gotta be a sex scene of some sort. It's just, it just has to play to your senses. There's always a shot that like, like you said before, like the girls in a bikini are just kind of walking around like all sexy and that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. They put it in there because it sells. Yeah. I think it's the, like the four quadrant, right? Like you gotta appeal to the kids, appeal to the grandparents, appeal to middle aged people. What's this fourth quadrant? There's like uh Teens? teens, yeah, yeah. So you gotta, I think you gotta appeal the four quadrants for horny teenagers. Yeah, and <laughs> horny old men too. Horny old men. 
Because when I saw, I definitely recognized it. I was like, damn, she's pretty sexy, actually. Or it could have been the crew members just trying to get their own pleasure out of it. Because it, like, as as a filmmaker myself, it's, I mean, it, like. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't lie about this. It's like when you're shooting a half naked girl, there's a certain pleasure about that. It's like, yeah. this is actually kind of fun today. Instead of shooting Bart and Joe, it's like, oh, we get to shoot some models today. That's pretty fun. And like, there's like a certain, there's a certain exactly, there's a certain quality of just having uh, like half naked people on set or like or like a female presence on set that it makes it. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But the thing is, it made the cut. So they didn't just shoot it. It was planned the whole time. It was planned. It was a planned shot. Here, I found one. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah so what is like, that? Why did they have to shoot it like that? Exactly. Yeah, there it is, right there. See? That's a clear example. You see that case? That's oh, so yeah. smart. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like they, they awesome. showed it specifically. Because that appeal, the, the one on the left appeals to the senses way more than the right. Exactly. This is made for TV, this is the Oscar winner right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right there. Dude. This is only old white guys in the academy. Yeah. yeah. Guardian, AKA Tyson. Hey, pretty boy. Yeah, he's 100 pounds. They're very gentle in his 100 pounds. Hi, baby. I was here last time. <laughs> she, can't wait. she loves dogs. This is like humans. She loves dogs. Yeah. 